feels. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Laura Tau Purvis Court. And I'm Kathy Barrett. We are from Muhlenberg College, about 60 minutes away from here. And um, it's our favorite way to start the summer, being at Bryn Mawr College. Um, we know that our efforts at Muhlenberg to create a culture for critical digital pedagogy share probably some of the same principles and challenges as those of you um, at, your, at your respective liberal arts institutions. This is us. Uh, as I said, here, uh, contact information if you're interested in following up later. Um, part of our effort to create a culture for digital liberal arts at Muhlenberg is to involve <laughs> students deeply as collaborators. So you see Kathy and I here um, standing in New Orleans um, a few weeks ago at the Online Learning Consortium mm -hmm. Solution Design Summit and our project to create a peer learning network for digital, liter digital um, learning assistance was like a selected project. So we're really excited and we were <laughs> celebrating there. Um, I don't know if you can see the sign, but it says, overindulged or overworked, detox and de-stress. Um, isn't that a great sign for the digital liberal arts? Um, so in our effort to build this culture for critical digital liberal arts, um, it often for faculty feels like leaping over this great chasm, right? this move from the intensity of face-to-face -face residential teaching and learning to teaching online. Um, and engaging faculty and faculty development um, for online and blended pedagogies is really asking many to take a giant leap of faith. Um, and to a certain extent, they do. And, and our role is to kind of have all the supports in place so that they land softly. Um, so our talk in the next 18 minutes is going to be about <laughs> the kinds of structures, programming, practices, and relationships, really. That, um, that have helped empower the first cohort of four faculty at Muhlenberg um, teaching online courses. So the, the first principle in our faculty development <coughs> program for um, blended and online teaching is that faculty development experiences must embody the same participatory and open pedagogies that we aim to promote in blended and online learning itself. So our program has to model those for faculty. And for us, that really begins with creating a, a welcoming, inclusive community. And practicing modeling with faculty who want to teach online what it means to construct and sustain an inclusive learning space, whether it's offline or online. So we issued a call for proposals in spring 2015 from the provost's office for faculty across all departments and disciplines to participate in the first faculty development cohort for blended and online learning. And the way we designed the program for four faculty, who I'll tell you a little bit about in a second, we had six face-to-face -face cohort meetings. We did a five-day online course. Oh, and our cohort meetings were really fun. We always had food. So that's <laughs> <us. laughs> raucous, fun, um, inclusive cohort meetings. Five-day online course, a one-day intensive. It's under snowy mountains because that, I don't know if you remember spring 2015, but it just never stopped snowing. Um, and the, set, the workshop was rescheduled multiple times. Um, in addition to, to those group meetings, individual faculty met with different um, members of our digital learning team, librarians, instructional designers, Kathy for assessment, um, and so forth. Then they participated in a collaborative peer review. They shared their course, they opened their course up to each other and, and, um, and engaged in peer review. And then later, many months later, um, and, and in an ongoing way, they're sharing the gifts of their learning um, through this process with others, presenting at conferences and presenting to our own faculty. Sometimes it's easier to present to other faculty at conferences than it is on your own campus. We had four faculty, a faculty member in media and communication, and her course was media and society, an intro to site course, an intro to American national government, and an introductory physics course for non-majors. I'm sharing these banners with you in Blackboard. They're not all that, you know, Blackboard isn't 
something we're super excited about. We're excited we left Blackboard and <laughs> migrated to Canvas. <laughs> but in spring 2015, when all we had was Blackboard, sitting together and playing and learning how to make banners was a critical moment for these online core faculty. They had fun, they goofed around, um, they admired each other's uh, creativity, and that was really an important moment for them. So the second principle is that critical digital pedagogy demands we think not only about how we work with technology, but how we work with each other. It means breaking down silos, it means working at the edges of our units or our departments, and it means being invested in each other's success in the service of teaching and learning. So for a faculty member who's never opened up Photoshop or any other kind of photo editing software to sit with another who it has some expertise in that and say, how do I get the dimensions of my banner to be just right, um, was in part to be a little bit vulnerable. Um, but part of what we did and what was really important to the success, success of these four classes was, what, was the manner in which the faculty worked with each other and the ways in which we made it possible for them to be vulnerable with the support um, from ourselves and each other. So I want to highlight that cultures of critical digital pedagogy need um, opportunities to learn with colleagues, needs interdisciplinarity, supportive environment, food, <laughs> uh, faculty, I just realized this is all being recorded and I'm just not so, um, vulnerability. Uh, faculty agency and voice. Faculty played a major role in shaping the agenda for our six cohort meetings. Collaborative solutions to shared problems. How do you get, at the time, a lot of our shared problems was how to do this in Blackboard. Um, <laughs> reflective dialogue. Faculty reflected intensively, face-to-face uh, -face and online in, in open discussion. And play, serious play. So I want to ask you, um, Not we're not going to stop now to do this, but um, along the way, if you have thoughts in four words or less of what critical digital pedagogy looks like on your campus or to you, we're asking you to tweet that with this hashtag, um, four word digped. Um, thoughts come to mind. So Kathy's going to take a look. Thanks. So you can imagine that it was incredibly crucial for us to assess the student perceptions of this new journey we were taking, the online course experience, and their learning. And we worked with our faculty, with the online four, as we called them, to develop a tool, an online assessment tool that was going to be given to all the students across all of the courses. The items, we had eight common items, as you can see. And we were allowed for course-specific items for individual faculty. So I worked with the faculty to develop items which aligned with the key components of their courses. The eight common items were really informed by the marvelous rubrics that are available to evaluate online courses. And I think we particularly looked at the um, Quality Matters rubric. We paid close attention to that. As I said, we had the eight items. My office administered this to all of the students across all of the courses. And I just want to highlight, you know, the, the two, the meaningful act interaction between students and the effect of online videos and activities to support learning. Our faculty, those who volunteered, were a little bit mm, skeptical whether or not they could generate and develop that same community of learners in an online environment as they had in the face-to-face -face courses. And we are really known for engagement with students, group work, so on and so forth. So we were really particularly interested in the results for that. What did we find? First of all, it was interesting who the students were who took these courses. The summer before, in summer 2014, we had our first pilot hybrid course that was taught by an adjunct faculty member. It was a course in astronomy. And the interesting thing there is about 50% of the courses were traditional day students, or excuse me, the students were traditional day students, and 50% were students from our adult Wesco school. That just wasn't the case in these courses. We found that the vast majority were traditional day students, and while they represented all class years, most were juniors, which wasn't quite surprising, seeing as though these were general education courses, and I think the students were probably motivated by, hey, I have the opportunity to take the course at Muhlenberg online that meets a general education requirement. Over half were women, I mean, it was 58%, and that's very similar to 
the population where we have slightly more women. And though, most had no prior online course experience. And this was an important question because we went disaggregated the data. We wanted to see if there was a difference between those who had online experience and those who did not. And I'm actually happy to report that we did not find any significant differences between those two groups. What did we learn? Well, students had an incredibly positive experience in these summer online and blended courses. The majority, 80% or more, were very positive about all of those common uh, items, as well as many of the course specific items that we had for the individual faculty members. They found that the course components were easy to find. The structure of the course was very organized, very structured expectations for online behavior. And that was something we talked about in etiquette an awful lot in our online faculty, or excuse me, our faculty development for the online cohort. Technical skills were outlined, and most importantly, remember that engagement? The students, even though the faculty, I think, were still a little bit skeptical, the students said, yes, indeed, the courses, the activities, the discussion boards, the group work, all in an online format did indeed engage us in meaningful ways working with other students. And of course, the online instruction, the marvelous videos, the activities, the discussion prompts that our faculty developed, students said they did indeed support their learning. So we did find when we looked at differences across class year that the first year students tended to have lower ratings on almost all of the items. And that was actually really helpful to know because we could then provide that information to advisors in an FAQ document so that they could better help guide their first year advisees into whether or not they were ready in order to take online and blended courses. So that's already assessment is informing, in this case, advising for our students. And then the other issue is that the ratings of technical information support tended to be a bit lower than some of the other ratings. And so what we're doing now, Laura in her work with the current group that is teaching online courses, or will be teaching this summer, just kind of emphasizing and making sure that that information is very prominent, it's detailed, it's clear, actually probably in several different places, as well as the digital learning team on the Canvas website, because all of our summer courses that are being taught online and blended are using the new Canvas, yay. Mm -hmm. um, the digital learning team is making sure that that's prominent on the, the Canvas page. So again, assessments already affecting and informing the changes that we made for this summer. In addition to collecting information about our students' experience with the online courses, Laura did a group interview with our online course instructors basically to find out where this very time-intensive cohort model, learning community model, was effective. Overwhelmingly, they found it to be an excellent experience. And as Laura noted, they appreciate it, and they really found it valuable to learn from one another, to share <coughs> ideas, share strategies, and to engage in that peer review. And it was. It was an awful lot of fun. You could tell there was a little anxiety sometimes when they were showing some of their first online videos, and you had folks saying, oh, please don't listen to me, and oh, oh you know. I think makeup, you know, having the makeup artist would have helped with some of them. But, but we were all there together, and, you know, Laura had the food, so it was fantastic. They really appreciated the, the group sessions and the individual one-on-one -on -one instruction with members of the digital learning team. And I think we're, we're high praise for the group of us who are supporting them. And then as Laura mentioned, we all did this online course workshop. And while personally there were some frustrating aspects of that, it was really important for all of us to learn what it is to be a student in an online environment. And I will quote one of our faculty members who said the stipend was a very big carrot <laughs> in order to make this um, a, an enjoyable experience, but one highly motivating. And then teaching a course really was a valuable learning experience. And so it was really exciting to hear from our faculty. And as Laura said, they've already presented several times on campus as well as at conferences. It reinforced for them the very, very very valuable focus on intentional faculty presence in an online environment, as well as regular feedback and consistent feedback to students. 
the need to communicate clear expectations and also workflow expectations. And I would say that this, as someone who participated in the online workshop and thought I could do everything in the weekend <laughs> uh, and found that we had an assignment right on Monday, I can understand why it was so important for the faculty members to communicate those clear expectations. The other issue had to do with the building community. Again, you know, faculty were saying, I'm not really sure it was happening in my courses. But when they saw the student assessment results and started talking and we looked at some of the student online discussions, they realized that they could be build that meaningful sense of community and learning community. And I think what was interesting is two of our faculty members said that they ordinarily find that in face-to-face -face courses, students who aren't going to be majors in these introductory courses tend to be like outsiders and their voice is maybe not as valued. They did not find that to be the case in the online environment. And but we've showed you a model of what we're doing with collaborative faculty development at Muhlenberg. And I think we have time, but we'd like you to take just a minute or two to talk to the person next to you and share what opportunities you have on your campus where you can leverage these spaces, these opportunities to engage in the collaborative faculty development to deepen your, your faculty and your students, I say, engagement with digital pedagogies. So you have maybe two minutes to do that. <laughs> to have a coffee hour with other folks who are teaching online courses to share strategies and to basically share some of the assignments, some of the work that we're doing. We're so glad. We want to hear how that goes. <coughs> Make sure you have good coffee. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.